Okay, so in this video, we will cover the completion of a manufacturing order. So assuming that you had already done something like a make to order workflow or a make to stock workflow, and the manufacturing order itself hasn't been started yet, but is currently present on your manufacturing queue, then what do you need to do in order to actually complete it? There's many, many ways to complete a manufacturing order, actually, um, in terms of what direction you can take inside of Katana. Um, but before we get started on any of them, we need to make sure that all the conditions are right prior to starting the manufacturing process. So the first thing you need to make sure you do before you even start a manufacturing order is make sure that you have the ingredients available to perform the operations uh, that are needed in order to make the product. So maybe one example here is I've got an order, which is SO-2 for the dining room table. That's beige for one piece, takes 15 hours to make. It's got a production deadline for the 14th, but I've got a delivery deadline for the 12th. I need to get this made before the 12th because my customer is requesting it, but it's a says I have nothing available. So what do I need to do? Well, first off, I need to make sure I get my dates right. So I'm going to move it up the queue a little bit and I'll put it into the first position. So that way I can complete the production on it on the 10th in order to make sure I hit my uh, 12th of December deadline. Now these two turn black, so I'm good. I'm good as gold and ready to rock. The next bit here is making sure that I have the ingredients available and in stock in order to start production on this. So this looks good. That's nice and easy. So there's two ways I can, or two or three ways I can actually work on this. First way um, is I can change the entire manufacturing order right here from the make screen, change it to a work in progress, and somebody informs me that it's done, I mark it as done. If I do that, it just is going to take whatever the planned time is based on the bill of materials, and whatever the planned uh, consumption of ingredients is based on the bill of materials and the planned out the planned production and put it to the actual output and then it's done uh, that's the quickest fastest easiest and most efficient way to complete a manufacturing order in katana the second way i can do this is open it up from the inside and complete tasks as needed going through the task list. And I have already actually, um, looks like I had edited this previously, so I'm going to reset those as required and make sure that we are currently in a not started state. So what you could do is you can mark these tasks as they're completed in real time by doing it like so. And then it will automatically change it to a work in progress based on the actual tasks individually being started and completed. And once all of the tasks are completed, then the entirety of the manufacturing order will move to a completed state. Now, before I change it to a completed state with the last task, I also want to say that if you want to, you can fast track it up here. In addition to that, um, if you are using the shop floor functionality, then these will actually be driven by the operators. So the operators will be assigned a task, which will be indicated here in the pro package, and they'll press start, then it'll be in a work in progress state, and then they'll press complete, and then it will show that the task is done. And it will also have tracked the actual time that was spent when it was marked as done, just as it would track the actual quantity of consumed ingredients at the moment a task was completed and consumed materials in the process. Because there are options where the floor app will ask the um, operator, how much of the material did you use? And if that's the case, then that stuff will update in real time after the manufacturing order is finally completed. So if that is all done, uh, either through the shop floor app or simply inside of the manufacturing order page like so, when I mark that as complete, then the entire state of the manufacturing order changes from open to done status. So a few things that um, I want to point out about a completed manufacturing order. Um, completed manufacturing orders will now incur an actual quantity of output product. 
an actual consumption rate of ingredients and an actual amount of time. And where does this become important? It becomes important in the scenario where you have uh, ingredients cost. So this cost is taken out from inventory and transferred into the new product value that's created. And then this cost that is incurred in this, in this situation, 170 US dollars of operations and 554 US dollars of ingredients. And those become a total cost of 724.6. And uh, these two costs are actually broken down. So since we're going back into the cost calculations, um, I'll show you where this information starts to get aggregated when the manufacturing orders are completed. So let's go ahead and navigate away from the make screen and go into the done manufacturing orders. And then you'll begin to see the breakdown of this order that we just completed. So as you can see, order uh, SO2, which we just completed for this customer, for this product, uh, the planned quantity was one, the actual quantity was one. So that means that the one that came out of there went into inventory. If the actual quantity was two, then two units would go into inventory once it's completed. Uh, the planned versus actual time, 15 hours was planned. 15 hours was actual. On the floor app, when each one of those operations are doing time tracking, then that will be aggregated and you'll have the actual time uh, calculated right here on the uh, completed um, planned time column. So you could, if, if you had planned, let's say 15 hours, but you actually did in 20 hours, then you would incur additional cost from the operations. Material cost here is actually calculated based on how much of that material you consume. So when we're looking inside of this, where you can see that we've consumed um, 554.6 US dollars worth of material, this actual quantity could be a different quantity, which would in effect uh, affect your costs. You can go back always and edit this information if you want, where you can actually put the actual quantity being a little bit higher. Let's say I use 20 meters of wood. And in the case of 20 meters of wood, I would incur some additional cost for the extra five meters that were consumed. And if I change that, then you'll see that the um, actual quantity will update. I will go ahead and refresh this just in case. Well, the actual quantity should update in real time to uh, reflect how much 20 meters of wood would be calculated. There is a chance though that I unfortunately might have some uh, problems with the demo data, but this should multiply the unit cost by an additional five and add it to the total cost. But let's go ahead and see what happens when I change it back to done. If that updates. Okay, so it did update. So anyway, not a problem with the demo data. That's just me being a dummy. But at the end of the day, it does update and it will reflect that additional material cost that's been incurred into the total cost of that manufacturing order. So now let's look one, once more. And then you see that now this is updated since I completed the manufacturing order. So the total cost uh, of materials plus operations, which in this case was $170. Again, it's the same use case. It reflects my actual uh, time spent. And if, for example, um, these are running at $10 an hour, and if that actual cost was, let's say I spent, um, instead of four hours of planned time, I spent, let's say, eight hours of planned time, that 40 US dollars should jump up to 80 whenever we adjust this um, actual amount. So this is the actual expense for operations. Operations is an expense. It means that you're paying money that would go into uh, paying people. It would go into running the electricity on machinery. It would go into the maintenance of overhead to keep the place air conditioned, whatever it might be. Those are operational costs that happen at the task level. When that money is spent as an expense, 
then it is adopted into the asset value of the product that you're manufacturing. So when I'm adding this product uh, to inventory, one unit of actual output into inventory, I'm adding one unit at a value of $939.60, which this is above my budgeted target cost of manufacturing in terms of both consumption of materials. Maybe I had an operator at the cutting process actually had wasted some wood, so he had to consume five extra meters at the cutting process, and it took him twice as long as a result of his mistake. That cost my business money. That is an issue. So if that issue comes up and I add this product into inventory, then it adds that value to my total value of stock for that particular good. Now, what's really interesting about how that relationship happens is if you have inefficiencies in your manufacturing process and that becomes evident on your uh, done task list. And we take a look at our uh, table here, this beige dining room table, you can see how this impacts your stock. I think I currently only have um, one beige dining table in stock. Let's take a quick look. Okay, so I currently only have um, one in stock, but uh, that one in stock currently has a cost of 939.60 US dollars because it came out to be something like 20 or 30% more expensive to produce that one time. But when I'm looking at the, at the product card and I see that my beige dining room table sells for uh, 1,250, but it should have a general cost closer to 554 plus 160, then I would have a significantly larger margin than I actually would in real life because the one that was made was made closer to 900 bucks, whereas what it's supposed to cost is more like 600 bucks. And um, I'm going to make significantly less money on that one order as a result of the mistakes that were made in manufacturing. So, uh, I understand I'm bouncing around a little bit here, but really want to show you kind of how um, when you're using the application, what gets affected by what specific um, types of numbers. And so these done manufacturing orders, uh, this is a very handy tool to tracking that cost over time um, with respect to material cost and operations cost. Now there's another cost in here, which we haven't really covered yet. Um, it's a much more, it's a little bit more comprehensive, but it's not too complicated. We can touch base a little bit on this when we have a full moving average cost um, overview video. But basically what a subassembly cost is, is anytime you have a product, which you manufacture inside of another product that you manufacture. So in the case of like a table, which we've used a few times as an example, you would have your wood and your paints as raw materials. Then you would have possibly something called subassemblies, which are the table legs, the table tops. And you take these materials and you build the table tops and the table legs. And then those become individual um, like manufactured goods which are sub-assemblies to the final assembly, which is the table. So if you have a three-step manufacturing process where you make two of those layers, then the middle layer is called the sub-assembly. So in this case, if we had, let's say, uh, three manufacturing orders, manufacturing order number one is for table legs, manufacturing order number two is for table tops, and those two are um, sub-assemblies, basically, they would carry their own cost from the materials and operations that were used to create them. And when they're actually made in stock, and then they become the ingredient for the final assembly, which is the table, then the cost that they have incurred from their own manufacturing process, which includes materials plus operations, becomes the sub-assembly cost for this particular top-level product. And that is when you would find the sub-assembly cost visible directly in this column. 
So since we don't have any subassemblies associated with this account, which I'm doing this demo on, um, if you were to have them, then it would be present in this location. And presently, we uh, by the time that this video is coming out and somebody is watching it, we're actually going to have a feature called subassemblies, which enables you to create manufacturing orders that have multiple subassemblies simultaneously in one go. It's not presently live, but it will go live actually next week in 2021, which is like December 13th, 2021, um, coming out very soon, uh, but not until next week. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I won't be able to demo it until later. But uh, having said that, um, on this page, uh, the total cost for your manufactured goods will become important for helping you understand how much it costs to make certain products. And this information is exportable. So if you can imagine it from this perspective, um, what you might want to be doing when you're kind of analyzing your operations after the fact, using your actual data, is you can take your completed manufacturing orders, export them, and in the export file, see information about uh, what SKU they're associated with, and then evaluate what is the cost or the average cost of manufacturing those products. And that gives you some more clarity about how well the efficiency and optimization of your manufacturing operation actually is. So what we'll do after this is we'll talk a little bit about the exported files that you can get directly from the make screen.